Well, folks, that's it. Discovery Shark Week is officially over. However, it just so happens that today, July 14th, is Shark Awareness Day and Pandemonium Day. Now, I'm a firm believer that to truly achieve shark awareness, you need to be aware of sharks in all of their forms. Great White Sharks, Hammerhead Sharks, Amityville Sharks, Lone Sharks, and especially, Snow Sharks. Snow Shark is a 2011 horror movie based on the 2004 short film of the same name. I'll try to keep it vague, but this video may contain spoilers. Director and star Sam Qualiana made the original short when he was a kid, and most of the cast is kids with sharpie on facial hair and clothes that are too damn big for them. Somehow, it's still superior to the feature film version. In the short, Qualiana plays Mike Evans, a hunter who goes out into the woods to investigate reports of a mysterious monster that killed three scientists. Mike's friends are all devoured before he's ultimately able to kill the beast, but not before it slices open his arm with its... uh... claws? Huh. I guess it's some kind of... man-bear shark. What animal could be killing our children? Do you think it could be a bear? Barbara, it very well could be a bear. Could even be a pack of wolves. The doctor said in his autopsy that that was a bear attack. Shit, Don, you know. Never seen Don, a wolf, on. bear, anything do that to a human body before. You told everyone it was a bloodthirsty bear that killed them. The 2011 feature film picks up seven years later when the shark returns to feed once more. Well, eventually. The first nine minutes of the film are spent establishing Professor Jonathan Hoffman, also known as Doc. He's charming, but adds almost nothing to the plot and only exists to fill the role of grizzled hunter out for revenge. He's supposed to be this movie's Quint, I guess, except that's also kind of what Mike is, and there's also another tough guy hunter character in the B-plot. For everything this movie does right, it's weighed down by way too many subplots and characters for its 78 minute runtime. I really couldn't make heads or tails of who I was supposed to care about the first time I watched this. By my third viewing, I realized Mike is still supposed to be the main character. However, a lot more screen time is spent on the sheriff, Don, and his team of experts tasked with getting rid of the snow shark from covering up its existence. This team consists of Lincoln, the cryptozoologist, Wendy, the conservationist, and Cameron, the hunter. The four of them are by far the most interesting and developed characters in the film, each with their own distinct personalities and social dynamics. When these characters were introduced, I started to think maybe this film would be more like Jaws, with a tight focus on a handful of fleshed out characters. Cameron would be kinda like Quint, Lincoln would be like Hooper, and Dawn of course would be like Brody, and Wendy would bring a fresh feminine perspective to the proceedings. I was sorely mistaken in this assumption. Instead, the movie shifts focus constantly between major and minor characters. A minute with Mike, a couple out on a date, the sheriff's angsty son Bruce getting drunk, a horny mall Santa, Cameron desperately trying to hit on Wendy, the mall Santa's wife yelling at the cops, Mike again, chatting with some nerds at the bar, a bunch of punks in a hot tub, Bruce's friend talking to the cops. Oh my god, it's a doggo! Anyway, spoiler alert, most of these characters die, including the ones we're supposed to care about, but it loses all of its impact because there were so many of them. The effects are delightfully cheesy with PNG blood everywhere and a shark that's sometimes CG and sometimes paper mache. It looks goofy, but at least it's not a child in a homemade morph suit with claws on the flippers. I think the story would have been a lot better and held my interest more if several of the diversions were cut and more time was spent building up Mike as a character and giving the experts a more satisfying ending. All their interesting character dynamics feel like a waste by the end of the movie because they never really live up to the potential of their roles. The scientists never make a breakthrough and the hunter does minimal damage to the shark. Even when the shark is defeated, the victory is quickly undone with a last minute plot twist. 
Overall, Snow Shark might fall into the category of so bad it's good if it weren't so convoluted and anticlimactic. I would only recommend it to the most diehard of the Finchianados. Hey look, it's the School 2 bus! Now you may be shocked to hear this, but Snow Shark is not a scientifically accurate depiction of shark behavior. Real sharks don't hibernate, unlike bears, and they're also not all that aggressive to humans. They can't smell blood from a mile away, and even if they could, they just don't really think of us as food. Just chew some gum afterwards, you pussy. You are what you eat, dick. Nice. <laughs> Rather, they don't know what the fuck we are. We evolved onto land hundreds of millions of years ago. We're completely alien to their territory, and that makes them not angry, but curious. It's believed that most shark bites on humans are merely exploratory actions. That they're trying to grab us with their mouths to get a sense of what we are. And even this is pretty rare. Last year, 120 shark attacks were reported worldwide, with only 69 of those being unprovoked. The number of hippo attacks reported each year ranges from 500 to 3,000. A very brief Google search did not turn up the yearly number of chimpanzee attacks, but it did return several headlines describing the primates as intelligent and violent. The snow shark, on the other hand, is extremely aggressive and powerful, tearing through the small town like a hot knife through butter. The sleepy town of Lockport definitely is not the shark's natural habitat, and its bites are not exploratory. This is vaguely explained in the movie as the result of an earthquake or something, displacing and awakening a prehistoric proto-shark. But it doesn't fucking matter, none of this makes sense, there, it, it makes no difference in how the battle plays out. Sam Qualiana later directed Post-Apocalyptic Commando Shark in 2018, which is a whole other kind of awful. I will not be talking about it, it's not a horror movie. Watch it only if you enjoyed Snow Shark but thought it wasn't dumb enough. Oh, and one last fun fact. Snow Shark was edited by the infamous Mark Polonia, who is responsible for a bevy of other god-awful shark movies including Sharkula and Cocaine Shark. What's your favorite corny shark movie? Is it Sharks of the Corn? Tell us all about it in the comments below.